Uh, you know, Minister Amit Shah today released the BJP manifesto while he was in Jammu. Now, in his manifesto, he has spoken about a number of things that have been fulfilled by the BJP government, the promises that have been made, the development that has taken place, infrastructure that has been built, jobs that have been provided, employment opportunities that have been fulfilled by the BJP government. Now, there have been future plans that have also been discussed in the manifesto to boost development, security and economic growth in the region. In his address to the party members, Amit Shah emphasized BJP's long-standing commitment to integrate Jammu and Kashmir with India, recalling the efforts of the figures like Pandit Premnath Dogra and Shama Prasad Mukherjee. He reiterated the party's belief that Jammu and Kashmir has always been an integral part of India and will continue to do so. Amit Shah highlighted the progress made under the current government, stating that Article 370 had obstructed the implementation of reservations. He noted that the Modi-led government has introduced reservations for various communities, including the OBCs, Gujars, Bakarwals and Pahadis, who had been deprived for years. Now, the manifesto promises large-scale development projects, improved infrastructure, enhanced employment opportunities and steps to ensure peace and security in the region. It also vows to enhance the financial security of women and the youth. It also stresses on ensuring the safe return and rehabilitation of the Kashmiri Pandit community as well as expediting the rehabilitation of the West Pakistan refugees and the POK refugees. Let's start our conversation on the telecast with me is uh, Okay, it's Jasmine Sandwalia. She's the BJP spokesperson. Jasmine, Jasmine, thank you for joining us on the telecast. And of course, uh, uh, you know, uh, during the announcement of the manifesto, the Sankalp Patra in Jammu and Kashmir, Union Minister Amit Shah has spoken at length about what has already been done by the government. He is particularly emphasized on abrogation of Article 370, which he assures has brought about development in all spheres and ensured safety and security of Jammu and Kashmir. What next is going to be the, on the agenda of the BJP? The promises that it wants to make to the people of Jammu and Kashmir so as to persuade them to vote for you and for you to win the election. You see, uh, uh, it was very natural for the Home Minister to speak uh, on length of what the BJP or the, the national government had done uh, for Jammu and Kashmir and the obligation of the 370 article. Now, uh, the point here is that uh, not only that the Home Minister reiterated our, the party's stand and the government's stand that uh, Jammu and Kashmir is an internal part of India and for its whole wholesome development, a detailed manifesto has been launched by the Home Minister and in which if you notice, it is all round development and also the sensitivity towards the victimized uh, segment of the Kashmiri Hindus who will be uh, resettled there. Uh, uh, an allowance of 18,000 rupees to every elderly woman in Jammu and Kashmir. It's like uh, giving uh, honor to, the, uh, I think that uh, uh, it is being called as the Ma uh, Salmanian uh, Yojana scheme and 3,000 rupees to every student in the state so that he's, he or she is facilitated and uh, he can, uh, it, it is a financial benefit to the student. Now, not only has uh, the BJP promised in all the, uh, pro has promised development in Jammu and Kashmir, but we have also emphasized that just in the recent past, a decade ago, what was happening in Jammu Kashmir was alarming. For decades and decades, Jammu and Kashmir after independence was a state which was always bleeding, whether it was the Muslims or the Hindus. But now it is, uh, it is for everybody to see that the terrorist activities have been curtailed. Okay. And, and and, and we are hopeful, we are very, very hopeful that the Kashmiri water, the Jammu Kashmir water will be receptive towards peace and prosperity and harmony and live in India peacefully. Okay. That is our agenda. Okay, all right. Let's get in the Congress spokesperson as well, Ravinder Kumar Sharma. Now, uh, Ravinder, uh, you know, the Congress is promises and in terms of how the rallies of Rahul Gandhi have been witnessed, have been perceived 
by the people there were two of them that he did in different parts of kashmir uh, the the singular focus or the underlining message that has gone out to the people is that the congress is towing the national conference line and its political ideology talking about how the locals rights jobs uh, have been taken away by the quote on quote outsiders now who are these outsiders that the congress is targeting are you talking about the kashmiri pandits are you talking about the the the, the those who are deprived and who have been uh, thrown out of pakistan occupied jammu and kashmir uh, what is the reason for you wanting to once again segregate the people of jammu and kashmir and divide them into quote and quote locals versus outsiders who are kashmiri pandits he first of all just um, the manifesto has been released details have yet to be gone into but the question is that it's a bunch of jumla as the bjp is known for making such false promises which is never fulfilled now they are in power for the last 10 years ruling jammu kashmir for the 10 years directly now for the last more than 6 years so they are making those promises which they adversely affected jammu and kashmir now question is who installed smart meter the people of jammu and kashmir were protesting against the policies uh, of the uh, taxes on power who were people were being taxed you know, hugely and there were large scale protests all around and now they are attacking about giving relief to the people who installed and who forced the people of jammu and kashmir so the question of outside of kashmiri pandit how can you term them outside they are part and parcel of poj ke refugee i am also poj ke refugee we were state subjects past in the past also we are domiciled now our rights have been reduced a law which is good for himachal pradesh a state so, but a my, law no, my is, question is a, my question is what does rahul yeah. gandhi mean when he says that I, I locals jobs that. lives and livelihoods have been snatched away by outsiders yes. now who is an outsider I, I, are you are you are you saying the rest of the citizens of the country are outsiders to jammu and kashmir and its people is this is this is this divisive politics that will allow congress to get the votes listen to me first then you can answer you can query me question is a law which is good for himachal pradesh laws which are good for gujarat maharashtra and north east state how can that be divisive in jammu and kashmir question is you have deprived people of jammu and kashmir now the contractors everything is going to those people small contractors petty contractors who are working they have been deprived of job because they are um, encouraging those people who are um, big contractors from rest of the country now they are engaging contractors of jammu and kashmir on payment basis so the question is jobs is the worst condition in last 45 years they promised job after post uh, post to 5 august 2019 also what what we were jammu and kashmir especially jammu afghan so turning these people who are the highest state subjects of jammu and kashmir whether they are kashmiri pandits whether they are poj ke refugees their issues were not sorted out it was the manmohan singh government which did that art for the kashmiri pandits under their regime kashmiri pandits who were employed to kashmir valley under manmohan singh package they were targeted and killed selectively mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they were on protest for the last 6 months Okay. Today they talk of the Kashmiri Pandits. What they did for them? What they did for other sections of the people? POJ ke refugees. Uh, I, we drafted a package, and package was that he gave 25 lakh to each family who came in 1947 or 65, 71, one time settlement. But out of them, they gave only five lakh rupees, and rest of the amount they are protesting on the roads. So on every front, they had been a failure. So what we talk of? Is, what is what the is the Congress's? Of, what is the congress's take on abrogation of article 370 because the national conference has made it very clear umar abdullah yeah, says every, that if 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 national conference is brought back to power they will be rolling back the abrogation of article 370 is the congress a, 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 is the is, congress agreeing is, with is, that is, with that with that premise of of national conference national conference as part of nda government when they talk the greater autonomy strengthening article 370 BJP shared power with the PDP when they talked of. I am just. I am very Today, asking you a very simple question over here. You, a, you, you give me. You, why don't you give me an, a yes or no answer? answer? You right now are are aligning with the PDP. national conference today no, no, in Jammu and Kashmir. Is, 
I am making a counter question. When they join with PDP, they join with Sajjad and Hodiyat Kanwar. Yeah, but exactly. That's they what I'm saying. The right. government dissolved. Yeah, they were not. We they were a, not happy we, in aligning with the PDP. It did no, no, not no, work, and they decided to part ways, and the government, government dissolved. I am going to ask the same question to Imran Imran Nabi, who is the spokesperson of the Jammu and Kashmir National Conference. The same question to you. Now, are are the ideologies of the National Conference and the Congress aligning? Are you together in it? And if you are, uh, how do you stand in wake of the Congress being dicey, not very sure about how to respond to your decision that if National Conference comes to power, there will be rollback, they will be advocating for the rollback of art Article 370 abrogation? See, uh, I will speak for National Conference and uh, I, uh, obviously parties have their own ideologies, parties have their own viewpoints. Uh, electorally, we have made an alliance uh, with the Congress and because we believe that, uh, we, uh, that there is a large chunk of vote uh, will get divided if we will fight separately. And right now, the mood, uh, the, the basic uh, target is that we have to stop BJP. Uh, the reason why National Conference have aligned uh, with Congress and other secular parties in the country is that uh, there is an atmosphere of fear, there is an atmosphere of polarization that is going on across the country and uh, we want to put a stop to it. And we believe that Congress has uh, the power and Congress uh, has the ability and Congress has uh, the, the, the you know, they have they have been doing it and they have made it absolutely clear uh, their their uh, their policy vis-a-vis -vis, uh, 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 secular traditions vis-a-vis -vis communal discord in the country uh, that is the main reason why national conference aligned uh, with congress and other secular parties in order to stop uh, the, the 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 vicious and uh, the dangerous politics of bjp that has ruined Jammu and Kashmir, that has wrecked havoc among the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And we are quite hopeful uh, on the ground. The response that we are getting from people on the ground is very positive. Uh, uh, there is no talk of uh, bifurcation of votes. People are eagerly waiting for uh, the poll dates. First poll date is 18 September and uh, people of Jammu and Kashmir would send a clear message uh, to the forces who are hell-bent uh, to to destroy our uh, communal okay. uh, harmony, who okay. are hell-bent to, to, to make things worse for people of Jammu and Kashmir, whether it is Hindu, Muslim, Sikh. Uh, we are here to fight uh, to get the rightful uh, rights of people of Jammu and Kashmir, whether it is a Hindu, whether it is a Muslim, okay, whether it is I a still Sikh. Haven't, I still haven't got an answer to the abrogation of Article 370 and obviously the vehement anger that had been shown by the National Conference after the uh, uh, the rollback of the article. No, my answer is pretty clear. We are we are committed. We are committed for this. We are committed to fight uh, till we get our rights back. That includes Article 370. That includes Article uh, uh, some sections of Article 35A as well. So we are how are you going to how are you going to come together with the Congress? Suppose you come to power and it is a coalition government of the Congress and the NC. How how are you going to align your interest with the Congress, which is still silent on this subject see i mean bjp when bjp made uh, article abrogation of article 370 as a political plan they only had two seats in the parliament so they fought for i think if i am not wrong uh, th their uh, agenda of abrogation of article 370 started way back in for 60 years we are also prepared for the long fight so it doesn't matter who supports us right now, but it doesn't our stand... matter whether the Congress supports you or not. You're going to take forward with your agenda. No, no. Uh, what I'm saying is that we are prepared to fight, and okay, uh, we okay, know that all this right. is Sumit not... P on the telecast with me as well. Sumit, how do you view at this point of time? One is the politics of the BJP. The Sankalp Patra talks about women development. It talks about employment. It talks about uh, improving the infrastructure. It talks about security and safety of the people. And on the other hand, the Congress and the National Congress has still not come up with their manifesto. But the speeches of Rahul Gandhi indicate that he is definitely, at this point of time, using the political plank of locals versus the outsiders to garner the votes. Your, uh, excuse me. We have 
National Conference is the first party which released its manifesto. Okay, the Congress. Sorry, the, con the Congress. The Congress. The Congress hasn't released the manifesto as yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sir. Yes. Thank you for having me on your show. Look, whatever you see in BJP's manifesto is whatever the Modi's vision has been for each and every state, and what has been the vision for India: its development, security, one empowerment, all round 360 development. That is what BJP is known for, and that is what it is here pretty much. And look, as far as Mr. Amit Shah is concerned, he's very categorical. He's straight. 370 is not coming back. It is being brought down in the Supreme Court. So I don't know how are they going to bring it back and how which magic are they going to pull. But they have what he rightly said, my friend here, we have another 60, 70 years to try. So by that time, he and me will not survive. So maybe our next generation will see, will it happen or not? But for 70 years... I will survive to see a restoration of articles. It's all good. It's all good. You know, 70, you can, you can try for 600 years also. Let's be optimistic. 600 would be a... a appropriate number. Let's try that. So uh, now coming back to the question, look, BJP's manifesto is pretty clear. Congress is, look, hunting with the hair and running with the house. They don't want to make their position clear on 370, but they want to align. I'll tell you why NC is aligning with Congress. Look, Umar Abdullah Saab has lost in Baramulla last time. Whom did he lose? Rashid Engineer. Where is Rashid Engineer in the jail? He files his nomination one day before the elections and Umar Abdullah loses in Baramulla, even with Ganderbal, his home constituency there with 160,000 votes. Now Congress and NCR athlete, what they are fighting with is not BJP because in Valley, they know it's not BJP who is a power. BJP is a power in Jammu and the surrounding places. But in Valley, they are really scared, they are very scared who from the jail is going to fight a nomination and whom we are going to be defeated with. So that is where the threat, threat, the threat is there getting together. What he was rightly saying, my friend, the vote will get divided because vote will get divided with whom? You are scared of separatists. You are saying they will run and we will be left out of the game. So you have no option but to align. It's a marriage of compulsion it's not a marriage of convenience because today i don't have an option let's try to do something because both of them want to at least have their interests cured on the valley and with due respect national conference is not a jnk party how many seats do you get in jammu how many get in udampur ramban banihal and others you don't get seats you only get seats in the kashmir valley earlier it used to be south kashmir but after the defeat of umar abdullah in in baramullah that has also been shattered so you are all fighting for your existential crisis Whatever packet, pockets of influence you have left, you are trying your best to do a alliance. Stick onto them, 370, no 370. It is not about that. You know you are not going to get it back. You know you want to be in the power, come what may. Okay. It's as simple as that. So if you have to befool the people one more time, let's befool the people. But where is the constructive agenda? Where is the development? Where are the things? Where is the inclusive development? Where are the things which you talk about? What is the vision of JNK? And what you have done to JNK, you have seen that what happened in the last 30, 40 years. Okay. If that is the vision of JNK, if that is what you bring to the table, I hope and pray you are never able to make it to power again. Okay, okay all right. Advocate Manas Vitapar also on the telecast. Uh, uh, Manas Vitapar, how do you view the politics of the BJP versus of the Congress? Congress National Conference when it comes to the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly polls? I think the politics is there and there's no denial of it and uh, this, is, this, this election is going to be very interesting because the voice of the people would be finally uh, the mandate is going to be out so uh, whatever BJP is saying so BJP as of now what looks like it uh, on, on on the optics of it is, uh, is on the front foot of it with the Sankal Patra coming out uh, the vision for Jammu Kashmir this is their vision of Jammu Kashmir which they want uh, the people sh uh, should accept and most probably uh, this kind of momentum which BJP has done after article uh, abrogation of article 370 uh, is that they, they, they are focusing on it. Uh, it's not that after abrogation they have left uh, Jammu Kashmir as it is but with this election with the Sankal Patra coming in uh, that kind of manifesto that detailed manifesto of uh, taking Jammu Kashmir, uh, Kashmir ahead has not come out from any other political party. I don't know what is there at the ground level, but the optics, when I say the optics of it uh, on, on, on television screens or on the social media is right for the BJP. Uh, having said that, what the voters minded mind is, is the voter actually happy with the abrog abrogation of Article 370? Uh, the, uh, the entire country may have celebrated it. But the people in the valley, have they celebrated it? It's on the people. Are they going to vote for yes. uh, B because of that? Uh, we at the studio are sitting here. Uh, yeah, not so that's what I'm asking. It, it Does it make intelligent, prudent politics for the Congress and the National Conference to then gain in on this local popular sentiment? As you said, you know, abrogation of 370 may be celebrated in the rest of the country. But, but what is the sentiment of the locals? 
think if the voters are going to vote for BJP, I think it's a great celebration and this is what the voters wanted it. Um, maybe Congress could not understand it in the last 75 years, but BJP could have understood it and that's why they voted for uh, BJP at the Lok Sabha and that's why they, they got the abrogation of Article 370 if BJP comes in power. If BJP does not come in power, this is an indication that abrogation of 370 is not in favor of uh, is it not in favor of BJP, which they wanted it? Maybe in the national sentiment, yes, it's good for BJP. But in the Valley region, it is not great for BJP. That is what the idea could be. But uh, but what uh, what what other side of the story is? Uh, all the local uh, alliances have come together uh, against BJP in this particular force. And when we say that, that does not mean the local uh, political parties are anti-national or anti-Jammu Kashmir. They have a, their own ideology, which would be liked by people, which will not be liked by people. Lest, lest uh, we wait for the election result to be out till then, I think it's a great, uh, uh, this is a great voting s uh, session for Jammu Kashmir. Why do I say that? There are two different ideologies which are fighting this election, which has never happened in India. Uh, completely different, completely poles apart. Right now it's happening. One is for Article 370, one is against Article 370. So that is what is going to happen. So this is going to be a turnaround for Indian politics. It may go in the favor of BJP, it may go against the BJP, but this is going to be a great turnaround election, not only for Jammu Kashmir, but for the sentiments of the entire country. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.